Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. The hands down hardest part of being a girl is figuring out like your appointments and lining them up with like your schedule of like what you have to do in the next few months. Like it's the fact that I'm planning out my hair appointment, my nail appointment, my lash appointment for two months away. Like, this is what I'm stressing about. Like, I know my friend is getting fake married on a Sunday in April, so I need to figure out where I can get my lashes done on a Friday before that Sunday and see if it matches up with the rest of the two weeks that I usually go to. Or if I need to get my hair done one more time before May so that my roots aren't too, too grown out so that I can dye them again in May and get new extensions then. Like, this is just too much for my little brain. Ah, uh, the difficult times of being a blonde girl. Before we get into that, did she at any point said her friend is getting a fake married? <laughs> anyway, let's see. You pick up the phone, you call your hairdresser or your hairstylist, and you make an appointment for next month, let's say on the 14th. If you really like to hear yourself speak, that takes about maybe 5 minutes, let's say 10. The next well spent 10 minutes will be to call and make an appointment for your nails. Let's say that takes an hour of your day. What do you do with the rest of the time straight out i have no dating life i develop crushes very easily like an instructor at my gym um the coffee shop guy near my place uh it's, <laughs> it's yeah i think i kind of do that to compensate for the fact that i have no love life but also at the same time, I'm terrified to have a love life because I think about all the complications that come with that. And after my last relationship, bro. I'm thinking about it now and I, I wouldn't even really know what to do if a man approached me. It's happened, but I find it very hard to switch between like work me and personal life me when it comes to interacting with guys in a social setting. I don't really know what to do or how to act so I just I s I use humor as a deflection and I can make everyone laugh and that's easy for me but if we were to actually go on a date I do not know what I would do well, if it was me, I would go for honesty. As in, tell them what I do for work and watch them how fast they stand up and live. You have an OF account and as if that wasn't enough, you're also a working girl. And by that I mean working by the hour. You must have known from the beginning that's gonna affect your dating life, right? Okay, part one, episode three of disastrous flirt in dating lack of skills. So I'm at this bar, I see a really cute guy. I go over to him, try a chat line. Oh, creature was so well. So I said to him, have you got a Mac to get lost in your eyes? <laughs> he looked at me and I swear he responded with, no, I don't have a map. And to be honest, I think you're lost in general. <laughs> Trying to be cute, comes back with, oh, maybe you could show me around. He just said, I'm not a tour guide. Um, good luck finding your way though and walked off. So I'm going to stick to the day job and give up with the professional chat lines. Any any advice? Uh, no, you said it yourself, you should stick to your day job. I know I said usually you go up to a guy and 9 out of 10 times he's gonna say yes. Unfortunately, he was the one saying no. Sometimes guys do go to a bar just to mind their own business, enjoy a drink or two and be there in their own head. And of course, if I wasn't trying to be polite, the other response would be, you're not everyone's cup of tea. And if I really wanted to not be polite, that was some lame pickup line. Is anybody else like really exhausted by dating apps? Cause I know I am. I'm just tired of swiping, matching with the same people, saying the same things about myself, answering the same questions. And I know that's really contradictory cause I know I've made videos before saying, keep going on those dates, keep swiping because who knows this date could be your last, but I'm really exhausted. But then how else do we meet people? Does anybody actually meet at the gym? Has anybody ever actually had a really good meet cue from seeing somebody in a coffee shop or a grocery store or a restaurant? I don't know. Where do we meet people these days if it's not on dating apps? I need some help because I am, I'm really exhausted. Where and how do you meet people? Well, not at the bar from earlier and not with that pickup line. Remember when this was a thing? 
Did you say something? Sorry. I, I see you around the neighborhood all the time. Dude. And, oh my god, I'm appreciating you coming for you. Thank you. But I'd also like to give her an opportunity to appreciate you. Anyway. <laughs> I'm not seeing anybody. <laughs> Yeah, that used to happen. In the meantime, you decided to yell at men to not approach you and we have dating apps now. You're exhausted from dating apps? Well, you better get used to it. I'm at the age where if he's not my husband, he's not my boyfriend. Let's talk about it. What I mean by that is if I am going on dates with someone and I realize that they are not the love of my life, they're not my husband, then I will not put a title on that relationship because how is my husband going to find me when I'm cuffed in a relationship? He's not. The question is, how exactly are you gonna know from a few dates if he's gonna be your husband? He might be your husband, but he needs to be your boyfriend first. And if you say no to that, well, good luck finding your husband. If you really expect him to propose after a few dates, you're in for a big surprise. I don't know why people complain about being single so much. Like, I went out with my girlfriend, had a couple drinks, flirted with some guys, came home, showered, and now I'm gonna eat sushi and watch Gossip Girl for the rest of the night. And then there's something under my pillow that's gonna make sure that I finish and I don't have to fake it for anybody. So I don't know why we're complaining. Who's complaining? The only thing I would complain is about that sushi. But I can't lose any more subscribers like I did with the pineapple pizza. So yay, sushi is great. I will not touch it, but yeah, I'm sure it's great. No one is complaining though. Maybe the ones complaining are the ones who realize that batteries are not enough to have a fulfilled life. Also, people might say that if you really are happy being single, you don't need to advertise how happy you are being single. But still, no one's complaining. Hey bestie, let's talk about why it is not unrealistic for women to have high income expectations for the men that they date. Whenever women say a minimum dollar amount in income for the men that they date, the internet, everyone, men and women are so quick to say, that's so unrealistic, she's so delusional, blah blah blah. You know that only X percent of men make X amount of dollars a year, like so delusional. These women, that's why they're single. They're gonna grow old with their cats and their dogs, that's why they're gonna be single forever. Okay, first of all, whenever they say these statistics, it is national. Like, the sample size is ginormous. So the average dollar amount in income that they're talking about would be for all of the United States. Bestie, you're an educated girly. What did you learn in statistics in college? As a girly in STEM, well, ex-girly in STEM, it's all about the sample population. You change the sample population, you change the statistics, you change the demographics, you change the outcome. You are not dating all the men in your country. You are dating a select group of men who are most likely to be what you want. You are dating the statistical mean of that specific demographic. There will be no further explanations. Now get that bag, bestie. That's always the excuse when you have no further argument. The sky is yellow, I will not explain any further. Great, but that still doesn't make you right. And how exactly do you change statistics to change the demographic and to change the outcome? Let's say only 10% of the men in the US are making that type of money. What would be the percentage of those men making that type of money in the area that you live in? Because you said you don't want to go national. Even if it would be 10% of the men in your area making that money, if there's more than 10% of the women who want those men, there's still gonna be a smaller chance for you to go on dates with those men. And that's without considering that those type of men might not want to go on a date with you. But I think the bigger question here is, why do I argue with the delusional? As someone who's been single for almost two years, I've had like short little flings and like short term relationships, but I've had no serious relationships for almost two years. I can confidently say that you don't want to jump in a long-term relationship with a man who cares so much about body count and places so much emphasis on sex. Hear me out. Of course, I don't want a man who's completely like ran through. But at the end of the day, you're never going to know the ins and outs of your man's past. Just like he's never going to know the ins and outs of your past. Plus, in my opinion, I don't think you should be sharing all of those intimate details with someone you're dating because the past does not matter. What matters is right now and how you're acting with the man you're dating 
right now. If that's what helps you sleep at night, keep saying that to yourself. Isn't it weird that I've never heard someone with a low body count saying, oh, that should not matter? No, they're not saying that because that's not something that they need to worry about. It's you who worry about that. Don't get into a relationship with a man who cares about body count. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Because he's not gonna want to be in a relationship with you anyway. You don't want your man to be like you, but you have a problem with him not wanting to be with someone who is like you. One of the most interesting parts about getting divorced young is that all of a sudden, all of these people that you thought were happily married start coming out of the woodwork and they're like, hey, how did you know it was time? Hey, what was your breaking point? Hey, what advice would you give me? And I love that. It's like all of a sudden, all of the secrets and like the weird pretending that you're happy falls aside. And love that. Yes, come to me. I will be your emotional support divorce doula anytime you need. Okay, sure, but were any of those people men? Because my guess would be no. This is the new iPhone Max Long, and Apple created this for people that specifically have girlfriends that get pissed off for no reason and like to send essays. And that will be a phone no man will buy, ever. Anyway, this is gonna be the end of the video. As always, I do hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.